is his partner. Fritz is the lock and Mulholland is the coach. Jeff Toovey, the captain. Rich is at fullback. Moore, Innes, the Western Red from last year in the centres alongside Terry Hill. Hoppawati's on the other wing. Lyons and Toovey are the halves. Gillespie, Sedaris and Cunningham up front. And this outstanding back row, Menzies, Gartner and Kosev. That's pretty hard to top. And the coach, of course, the Australian coach. And great Bob Fox as the referee Mick Lewis. Gets ready to start the action. The Western Reds defending the eastern end of the ground in this first half. A very muddied area there in the cricket pitch area at the Wacker. Lewis, a loud thrill of the whistle, and the game is underway. As Manly have it, Kosev, a couple of grabs at it to get it, and he's going to play it about 18 metres out from his own line. Reserve grade uh, this afternoon was a tremendous performance from the Western Reds. As Manly have it just outside the quarter line. And the Western Reds coming away with a 17-4 victory over Manly Warringah. And uh, they did it tough at stages in the first half, but they dominated the second half and really did lift. And some of those late changes that were necessitated, uh, which uh, you reflected here in first grade, haven't helped. But they've done pretty well. They joined Manly on 12 points on the competition table in reserve grade. Lions, his first kick of the afternoon, deep inside the Western Reds' territory. And as always is the case here at the Wagger Ground, it rolls end over end towards the sideline and play will restart with the scrum 10 metres out and 10 metres in from touch on that far side, the northern side of the field. Yeah, David, 30 metres out from each goal line. There's a little bit of water on the ground, but it does sink in uh, very quickly here at the Wacker. Between the 30s um, and the 50s, it's very, very muddy in there. Yes, of course, they didn't cover the pitch area. They had the AFL match, the Dockers and North Melbourne here last night, and it rained uh, quite a lot during that match. They left the covers off to allow it to try and dry, and then the rain this morning has really made that area in the centre very gluey. The Western Reds run it out from their own end of the park, and to just give us some idea about how cold and wet, even though it doesn't look it there at the moment, it is down on the sideline. Good afternoon to Adrian Barrett. Yes, good afternoon, David. Actually, as you said that, the sun has come out, and it is magnificent out here. It's amazing. But the centre pit wicket area is very, very muddy, very boggy. And uh, planting your feet is going to be hard for the boys. I think you can expect a lot of kicking from Manly early because they have got a very, very heavy breeze. Top versus bottom, it's hard to know uh, what to expect, but the second grade has inspired the Reds, guys. They had a great win, and uh, that was a big talking point in the room. So I think uh, it might be some early fire from the Reds. And here go the Reds, taking it to within 30 metres of the Manly line. Fuller, Rodwell. Away it comes to Fritz, and Fritz finds a little opening just outside the quarter line. I've often read a lot about the Manly attacking machine, but, well, gee, their defensive effort's outstanding. In the last two years, in fact, I think you'll find that the Western Reds had one of the best, if not the best, attacking performance against Manly throughout the entire 1995 season. As the Reds again, through O'Neill, come down through Kearns, back on the inside, O'Neill again. Gets within 18 metres of the line. Yes, David, that game was uh, played at Brookvale last year. If you're going to play Manly, play him fast and wide. The ball loose, but Rodwell picks it up. Six to go, said the referee. It came off another Manly player's hand, and he's got six more. And Scotty Wilson's going to play. That be 12 to go. <laughs> They'd like it to be 12 to go. An Robbie Kearns. An interesting selection there. Scotty Wilson at 5 8. This will be about the uh, fourth 5 8. They've tried the Western Reds in first grade. Peter Shields goes straight and hard, and he's always very close. He's only a metre or so out. The Reds on the attack in the opening stage. And Matty Fuller tries to reach out, and I think he's lost the football. Knock on, says the referee. And play will restart with a tap kick from the centre of the quarter line. Manley's end of the park, and Lyons takes it quickly. Yeah, that was a great opportunity. Have a look at Matty Fuller. He hasn't done this much this year. Lost control of football as he went over the goal line. 20 metre place kick to Manly. Great attacking opportunity there for the Reds. Well, we went within the, an ace of score in the first try of the match. Gillespie has the football. 10 metres his own side of halfway. Interesting tactics early, David. The Reds are going side to side. Manly, they're just going straight down the channel, straight down the middle of the field or on the side of the field and using a kick and gain through lines. Cunningham plays the football right on the halfway line. Not a good pass from Sedaris. Tooby went without. Lyons did very well to pick that ball up in difficult circumstances and then offloads to Kosef. Here's Innes. What a loss this fellow's been for the Reds and a gain for the Manly Moringa side. I said last year, I reckon he's the best centre in New Zealand and they didn't give him a run. Here's 
uh, Terry Hill making some space after what looked to be a suspicious pass. He might have missed the first one, but he hasn't missed the second one. No, I was definitely forward that first pass just before um, the referees picked up to the Lions. Have a look at this. The ball is going to go... <coughs> The ball's going to go wide here to the um, left-hand side of the field. Have a look at Cliff Lyons' pass here. He draws the defence. Yeah, it's definitely there. It definitely was thrown forward. But down the centre again come the Western Reds. Higgins to get up and play the football. Almost in the centre of the field. Rodwell. Boyd found Kearns. Boyd again. I don't think they'll be trying to run it through much through that cricket pitch area all that often. Not much advantage in that as Rodwell kicking for touch on the northern side of the field. Getting back well, Danny Moore covered that ball up superbly. Gave himself every opportunity to make sure there was no chance of that ball either slipping out of his hands or giving the Western Reds an opportunity to get position back. Well, mate, Matthew Ridge, Danny Moore, Craig Innes, to me they have been the form players of Manly in the last few premiership rounds. One, two and three, I rate these fellows. Ridge, Moore and Innes. You've got a few of them. <laughs> Gillespie, just outside the quarter line. As Manly again through big Nick Kosev takes it to the 30. Last tackle against Manly. Sidaris. Ridge. Good kick deep inside the Reds' territory. O'Neill positioning himself well. Runs it out to his own 30. Goes straight through. O'Neill's over the halfway. O'Neill's over the halfway. He's away from Reds, but he's caught from behind in a great tackle. Absolutely monumental run. By Julian O'Neill. Fielded the kick. And he's made a 50 metre break, broke right through the, the manly defence, and off he's gone. Here he comes now, he breaks one, two tackles here. He sees daylight, sees the cricket pitch, straight through the cricket pitch he goes. He's confronted by Ridge. Ridge looks though, he's got him. No, he hasn't got him. Oh, great tackle there from behind. And Ridge comes in late, holds him down. Could, could have been 10 minutes there. The referee says, get up, let him play the ball. What about Terry Hill? What a good tackle. Oh, great tackle. Came from nowhere to execute the tackle. A great uh, football from O'Neill. To make the break through the centre of the cricket pitch, you won't see that too often today. Very gluey. A great fullback. I think he just might have found his position. He just needs a little bit more room to move with the ball in his hands. If he can see space in front of him, Julian O'Neill is a very hard competitor. Mainly be winger, Dave. They just seem to be. They, they seem to be switched on. Even one of those passes that went to ground a little while ago. It just well, seemed difficult. to roll on the ground, and no one. There was no urgency. There's no atmosphere here today either. Probably a smaller crowd than what they're used to playing um, in front of. It's a, it's a crowd that's obviously supporting the Reds. It's often hard for, for teams to lift, especially teams that are, are used to having big crowds behind them. People used to say it was very hard to play at Cronulla because there was always uh, that feeling of, or lack of atmosphere down at the Shark Park. And often the better players didn't lift themselves because they're used to playing in front of capacity crowds. O'Neill with the opportunity to put the Reds in front. 23 metres out. Strikes it pretty sweetly. It looks pretty good at there. First blood of the Western Reds. And the Western Reds as the sun comes peeping through again. A leading Manly Warringah by two points to nil. back of the wagger with the Reds drawing first blood the penalty goal to Julian O'Neill and let's go down to the sideline that was beautifully taken by Scotty Wilson the kickoff and uh, Adrian Barrage that was a great take but Julian O'Neill's run through the center was amazing he even stepped through the center pitch here I've been out there and it's very boggy it's I've been told it's like treading water running across there but O'Neill was able to run across the top as if uh, light on his feet so a, a tremendous effort by him. Oh, boys, there's about 10,000 people here too, despite the weather, so not a bad showing for the from the punters here. Well, especially when the Eagles have been on television as well. That doesn't, doesn't help things. As, uh, David, as he was saying... The Western there, Reds bring it out. Sorry. Sorry, Julian O'Neill, you know, like it, it looked like he was running on top of the mud there. Well, over here, he's like a god. So the Reds have it. 10 metres their own side of halfway. Rodwell... Gets his kick in. Ridge across field. Beautifully positioned. Takes it well. Now trying to set up more. More 
Back on the inside. Paul Evans wraps him up. The big bird of the Western Reds. Speaking of Evans, I think you were very impressed with Wayne Evans in reserve grade today. I had a tremendous game, didn't he, Wayne Evans? And I'll tell you what, this reserve grade side, let's keep an eye on them for the, um, the uh, upcoming semi-series. The way they play today, they're a great chance of making a semi-final series this year. Yeah, look at that mud there. Doesn't come much thicker than that. Well, Ted, you probably played a game with Bob Fulton, the manly coach at Carlaw Park. Did you ever you play in the bog there? New Zealand? Um, yes, I sure did. That was, it is a very boggy uh, park over there. Very boggy. Sedaris. Away it comes to you. That looked to be a high tackle. As Gartner has been tackled, and the referee is getting Robbie Kearns. Just going to give him a caution. But the penalty will go to the Manly Baringa side, and I reckon Rich, he might even have a shot at goal from here. Although it's pretty difficult in those muddy conditions. But he does have the breeze at his back. He's on a kick for touch. I just wonder whether in those conditions he's happy about being able to strike the ball well enough. Well, of course, with the confidence that Manly would have, they would think there's probably a better chance of scoring six than two. So Gillespie plays it to Sedaris, and away it comes to Cunningham. He's only 11 metres now away from the Western Reds line. Dummy half is Jeff Toovey. He comes the short side. Toovey holds it up. Kosev, good movement. It comes to Menzies. And Menzies is only six or seven metres away from the line. That was a planned move there. They forced a wedge in. It didn't come off. Kosev, Lions, Lions. If you allow him to run, he'll, he'll just murder you. Ridge in the end is tackle only 10 metres out. More Lions again. Back it comes Gartner. Gartner only eight metres out. Last tackle against Manly Warringah. And this is going to be a penalty. Well, that is a silly penalty that Peter Mulholland would be most upset about on the last tackle. Now they've got another six to run at the Western Red side and Cunningham's only 10 metres out. Matthew Rodwell doesn't look very good after that last tackle. He's got up holding his shoulder. Now here's Kosev. He's only five or six metres out from the red line. Sadaris in at the dummy half position. Lions in a bit of space. Finds Menzies in support. And Menzies is beautifully wrapped up. That was a good tackle. Boyd was the initial tackler. Sedaris, Lions again. Tuvi, Tuvi across field. Tuvi back on the inside, ducked under a high one. Tuvi again, look at him. He's only six or seven metres out. Sweet, there's tackles there by the Reds. Ridge finds Lions. Lions cuts out a couple of them, and in the end it came to Hill. And Ryan did well, and in the end, over the top, Barry John Mather finishes off the tackle. And Chris Ryan read that very well. Last tackle, Kosev. Lions. Lions tries the grubber kick, and it's beautifully taken by Julian O'Neill. Or the referee rule a knock on? It was a knock on. We'll have a 10 metre scrum, and it'll be Manly with the feed again, applying pressure to the Reds. So they've done well so far to keep them out for 12, but now they've got to make it 18 against the best side in the competition. Well, on paper, the best, and on form, I reckon they're the best. I just seen Clippy Lions. They, they they turn the ball back inside. They keep the markers wedged in. They bring the uh, first first defender off the ruck in. The switch play, then go wide. Tuvi off the back of the scrum. Tuvi on his own, almost getting in behind the defence. Great tackle from O'Neill. Ball and all stuff. Gartner. Here's Lions. Big line out wide. Rich. Rich stands it up but can't get the pass away. Innes was flying through. Lions again on the short side, on his own, it comes to Menzies. Menzies trying to force his way over, drops the pass behind him and coming up with the football is the Western Reds. Scotty Wilson. Well, Menzies trying to just pop that ball out the back. He had plenty of support initially, but in the end when he let it go, the only man there was Scotty Wilson. Yes, they had a feast of possession manly there, and they just couldn't get over the goal line. Great defence by the Reds. I reckon that would be close to the Western Reds' best defensive effort throughout the 1996 season. And they've only come up with one error in his first 15 minutes. That's astounding. But it must lift them, knowing that they can do it against a side like Manly Warringah. I think you hit the nail right in the head, David, earlier. The Reds do lift against the better sides. The top three. Now, the kick comes in from the fullback, O'Neill. Here's John Hopawadi. Hopawadi from Ridge back to Hopawadi. Hopawadi straight through the centre of the cricket pitch area. Again, Gartner. 
almost in centre field where he'll play the football. Gillespie. And David Gillespie will get up and play it about eight or nine metres, the western red side of halfway. Kosef, Hill. That must have been a heavy hit, you could hear it from here. Sidaris. We saw Ramono on the sidelines momentarily. As now look at Lyons, he will let him run with the football and show it. He can create it, I think, Danny Moore. Moore back on the inside, Menzies. And Menzies scores! But put it down to Cliffy Lyons. If you let him run across the football field and showing the ball, he'll create something and what good football more and Menzies. And this is just classic Lyons. Yeah, the ball went out wide. I've got to be um, number four there, Chris Diva. He just went too far in the shifting line. Moore's come back inside and he's picked up Menzies. And what'll that be? Number 11 to our Menzies this year. Knows how to score a try, that man. And here it is again. David, you just have a look out wide there. The, the Reds will shift out wide, but they just seem to have um, a man over there. We'll have a look at number four here, Chris Diva. Here he goes. Now, there he is there. He'll go across. And look, he's, he's put himself in the winger in no man's land. Moore comes back in, links up with Menzies. It's all over. But yep, Cliff Lines, let him run. He'll create havoc. Stephen Menzies, a this great prolific impact, try scorer. Though. Had a fine series against um, Queensland, also coming off the bench. What an impact player. Ridge and Dead Eye Dick doesn't miss them normally from anywhere. And Matthew Ridge adds the extras, converting the Menzies try. And Manly hit the lead. And they lead here at the Wacker by six points to two. Welcome back to the Wacker as Manly Waringa have taken the lead with Menzi scoring that try. Six points to two, Rich taking the kick off. Cunningham runs it back and good defence from the Western Reds. Kearns and also Shields involved. Sidaris finds Gillespie and he gets it out to the 30. This weight of possession just then just proved too much for the Western Reds. And finally it took a man of the skills of Cliff Lyons to really set them on their way manly. Manly in centre field, again cutting him, takes the ball to the line but can't get the pass away. Sidaris will find Tooby and turn it out here towards Lyons. Lyons, plenty of support out wide, tries the little chip and chase. Paul Evans is back there and so too was O'Neill. Gee, for a moment, I thought both O'Neill and Evans were saying yours. Just for a moment, both of them hesitated. And I thought he, there was going to be an awful mix up there for a minute until Julian O'Neill said, no, you take it, I'll cover. Well, that's what it looked like anyway. As the, the Reds run it out from their own end of the football field. Out towards the 40. Fuller. Good tackle. That's what Matthew Fuller needs. More little runs like that out of um, a dummy half. He just lift his confidence. He has been sagging in weeks. weeks. O'Neill again. Quick hands along the back line. Last tackle. O'Neill bouncing the ball away from both Moore and Ridge and it's Moore in the end who collects it 10 metres out from his own line that looked like a pretty high shot too although the referee indicating it was across the chest Neil Tierney I think was coming onto the football field big man too played with St George and West for a while man mountain and here he is now Neil Tierney taking the ball up who's just come on Ridge it's Gartner with the football. Manly through Sadaris. Sadaris finds a hole and he got the ball back to Cunningham. And Cunningham, well, he was tackled about five metres his own side of halfway and plays it inside the Reds' territory. They've got a bit of a chance here. They've got a slight overlap. Lyons throws it back on the inside. Terry Hill and uh, Hoppawati might have been able to do something on the outside. Ridge. Here it is again, Lyons again, running with the football in front of him, creating doubt. Terry Hill can't get that football away, did in the end, 
In the end, it's kicked by Lyons. The referee is indicating that it'll still play on. And finally, the ball is kicked into touch. I think most of the players out there weren't sure what was going on for a moment, except Cliff Lyons. I think Cliff Lyons uh, put the little kick through, but all the other lads were offside. So they sort of stopped. As we see here, he'll just pop it out. Now, Lyons will kick the ball. Rachel's going to chase it, but he's in front of the kicker. So he can't pick it up. Oh, that possibly could have come off Fuller's... It has. Yes, it has. It's come off Fuller's foot. So, again, Cliffy Lyons is causing problems, even when... Uh, even when a mistake occurs, but now there's a mistake <laughs> by Manly, which means the Western Reds come up with the football anyway. Now, it, was not a, it was not a good pass, David, by Cliffy Lyons, and out to Matthew Rich. Here I am singing his He's only human. <laughs> and David Gillespie is the man who'd come off for Neil Tierney. Let's go down to the sideline again, Adrian Barrage. Yeah, you got me there, Dave. Cement Gillespie off for Neil Tierney. And uh, from the Reds' point of view, Doyle and Blair going on for Higgins and Shields. Well, you'll notice that... Uh, a couple of the new Western Reds out there in a second, and because uh, they'll have the uh, very clean Guernseys on. There's one of them, Jason Ead. Jeff Doyle is uh, this week's first game back after a month on the sidelines with a sore hand. O'Neill, the little chip through. Oh, Danny Moore, gee, he didn't he do well to clean that up? That could have been a very dangerous situation as far as Manly were concerned, and he really did put his body on the line to clean that situation up. That kick had had half a metre less weight on it. The Reds might have created something out of that. Well, um, you kicked it to a very experienced player in Danny Moore. A lot of people used to bag him a couple of years ago, but he's come on in leaps and bounds. He's one of the four players of the Manly uh, side at the moment. <laughs> then again, if you're going to kick the ball to Danny Moore, he's not a very big man, and um, probably you don't want to kick it a hop away because he is a big man. And I know who I'd like to uh, have someone running at me. The referee calling Blair out here for a high tackle on Gartner, I think. And the referee is going to give a penalty to Manly. And there's about, Gartner, yes. About nine metres inside the territory of the Western Reds as Ridge uh, finds touch. He must wonder what he's done wrong. I think that's two high shots he's had to endure today. Tierney takes it to the quarter line. Western Reds enter the park. Manly leading six points to two. Sedaris, Tuvi, Cunningham, just outside the quarter line. They've had a fair bit of possession, Manley. Sedaris, Lyon switches the point of the attack. Back the open side, Tuvi, Kosef, Tuvi, Ford pass, says the referee. In fact, it was almost it was very, very close, that one. Yes, I didn't, I uh, must admit. The first Here's Lyons. Lyons will didn't... throw it back to Tuvi. Now, have a look at this pass if it's forward. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it looked a bit forward there, but... Uh, marginal. Seen worse. Rodwell puts the ball into the scrum as the rain starts to come down again. And here's Big Barry, John Mather. I think it's about the first time he's touched the football. It just hasn't come to this side of the field. No, he'd love this here weather. Here comes the rain again. This is Barry, John Mather's weather. Good English weather, lad. This is very... Jeff Doyle to play the football. Blair. Cameron Blair almost back to the halfway. As the Western Reds take it to the halfway line. Tackle number four. Fuller. Rodwell. Rodwell. Side of the opening, but Jeer closed quickly, and Menzies was right round his legs. Scotty Wilson looking for O'Neill. O'Neill stabbing it for the sideline and runs along the sideline. Hoppawadi has to just tiptoe on the touchline hoping that it would probably go into touch at one stage before he collects the ball and will play it 10 metres out from his own line. So Manly have the football, more to get up and play it. We're about uh, what, 15, 18 minutes or so still to go in the first half. Oh, easily about that. As Tuvi brings the ball across to Tierney, Tierney out towards the 30, gets the pass away and straight into the hands of, I think it's uh, young Matty Fuller who's got it. And it is. In fact, uh, there was some discussion in the earlier game that when these two teams are facing each other, all the white on their guernseys could, could cause a little bit of confusion. Exactly right. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, that almost looks forward too as Grieve takes it to the quarter line. 6-2 the scoreline in favour of Manly. Matty Fuller in a dummy half. Rodwell, Doyle. They're in a good attacking position here, the Western Reds. 
Away it comes now. Rodwell going to the air. It's coming down. A Hopawati underneath it. Ryan underneath it. Hopawati knocks it on and the scrum will go down. Ten metres out and ten metres in from Dutch. And that all should mean that the Western Reds will get another six at them. Yeah, when that bomb went up then, uh, oh yes, he's knocked on there, Hopawati. I was just a bit worried about what Terry Hill done to Chris Ryan then. He just ran into him and pushed him out of the way. Referees and touch judges have got to keep an eye on this. Well, there's a good tactic. Put the ball high in the air. When that ball is high in the air, dead set, aren't you under pressure, David? Oof. Well, you're one man standing there waiting for it to come down. And... Yes. <laughs> and everyone's running at you. Oh, <laughs> some of the things you think of. Well, here it is again. That's what we'll hear there. Let's have a look and see if we can see Terry Hill. Out there. there you go. See a, a little jolt in the bump there. I think uh, in the end he pushed Chris Ryan towards the football. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he certainly pushed him. Taking some time to get this scrum sorted out. The Reds need to uh, consolidate here. Six tackles. They need to put points on the board. This is probably one of their fall downs of the year. Well, Sadara, how many times are going to put it in? Now, here's Doyle going for a run on his own. They come back to short side. Scotty Wilson running at Cliff Lyons and the two number sixes come together. Geez, he got thumped to the ground then, Scotty Wilson. Reeve, Rodwell, Robbie Kearns gets the pass away. Fuller, this is Barry John Mather. Out it comes, the flick pass, which finished up with Paul Evans. Looks pretty, but it didn't uh, create anything. Barry John Mather again. Deed. Gets the pass away. Barry John May, though, sights the opening. Goes straight towards the Manly Warringah goal line, but has held up. Good defence again from Manly. Only five metres out. Full up. Now it comes to Rodwell. In turn, it goes to O'Neill. O'Neill tries the little chip and chase, and losing the football for this region at 6 4 to go. Johnny Green will get up and play it. Now, can they score from here? As O'Neill tries to tiptoe through the defence, but can't. Full up in a dummy half. Rodwell. Jason E. Only five metres out. Manley's turn to tackle for 18 in a row. Can they uh, come up and prevent the Western Reds from scoring? As going hard and straight to the line is Big Jeff Doyle. He's only five metres out. Robbie Kearns at dummy half. This is Rodwell. The flick pass again to Barry John Mather. Only five metres out, but still Manley Moringa's defence holding on. 6 2 the scoreline. The Western Reds through Rodwell. Back on the inside is Kearns. Kearns flicks it out the back. Rodwell. Rodwell trying to create something out wide, but Paul Evans can't get the football. And so that great attacking opportunity goes out the window and Manley will come up with possession. Yes, I think uh, young Paul Evans there, he's a little bit disappointed at himself there. I think he went to catch the ball and he just fell over as the ball was coming towards him. Here he comes now, Rod will sight him on his lonesome out there, throws the long pass there, there it is. Slipped over, hit him on the shoulder. But, um, geez, I tell you what, they're turning the ball back in the reds a lot and um, the Manly defenders are wake up to this at the moment. There's the long pass, it'll go out, there's Evans. Yeah, hit him on the shoulder. Not a good way to finish off a set of six. So Manly with the football, nine metres, I should say 19 metres or so out from their own line. 6-2 the scoreline, as Rob Tooby goes for a little gallop. Robbie Cairns off, Scotty Wilson off. Scotty Wilson copped that very heavy oh, well, tackle off the line. Yes. I suppose that's the beauty of the interchange, isn't it? The, the player who might be suffering a knock, he can take off and give him a spell for 10 minutes. There are those that die hard who say that they'd rather the player stay on. Stay on the floor. Gartner, just inside the borderline, I should say, the territory of uh, wet the Western Reds as it comes to lines. Last tackle, a little chip over the top, and in the end it beats everyone across the touchline. Just outside the quarter line, where the scrum will go down. Well, that was a good 70 metres there. Just at the end of it, the ball goes out to lines. Just a little kick over. 70 metres. Thank you very much. Six tackles. We're down the right end of the field. Let's defend. Let's go down the sideline again. Adrian Barry. Yes, yeah, Scotty Wilson's right in front of me here. He can't uh, see out of his left eye at the moment. Uh, with a tunnel vision. So, uh, Ted, I don't think he could stay out there because he can't see properly, mate. 
Yeah, well, those eyes can be a problem. <laughs> you can't see that, isn't there? A major problem. Barry John Mather with it, 32 metres out from his own line. There's Scotty Wilson. There's a man to look, uh, he's looking uh, for Perth to resurrect his career. I'm sure the man can do it. Now the eye drops there for Scott Wilson. As John Greve has the ball back towards the halfway line. Rod Wolf. Yeah. Jason E. again has the football on the halfway line. Bullied. Fuller. Good tackle. He's running a lot more today, Fuller. This is the most he's run in um, all year. Last tackle against the Western Reds is the kick. Again, coming out towards Hopawati's wing. Barry John Mather was hampered as he ran through, and Chris Ryan tackles Ridge, just looking towards the touch judge, but nothing was on. But Mather was definitely interfered with as he was trying to challenge, come through and put some pressure on at that kick as Hopawati will play the football 12 metres out from his own line. Manly leading by six points to two. Innes, Innes, good break from Craig Innes, out to the 30. He's a big man, he's, he's like a raging bull. Very, very strong man, Craig Innes. Must give a rap to um, Chris Ryan. He doesn't get many raps, you know. I think winger is his position. He's had a fine game so far. He's got himself involved a lot in this game. An ex-manly boy himself. Menzies, well and truly wrapped up. Now, last tackle against Manly. Lions has kick, forcing Evans to go all the way back to his goal line. And down there quickly is more Tuvies down there. There's plenty of Manly players down there. In fact, there are only two Western Reds down there initially, and I think about six Manly players down there chasing, if not more. Good kick and chase from Manly. And the Western Reds, through Blair, still haven't got out to the quarter line after the kick. Manly have got a, oh, I'd say, a 10-point breeze easily behind them here at the moment. Grieve. 31 metres out from their own line. 6-2 the scoreline. They come the short side. They're going to try the kick on the fourth tackle this time as Ridge getting underneath it, watching that breeze bring it back to him. And he can't get away from Rodwell. Hopawadi, though, comes in and lends support in the cricket pitch area. He really has to try and do something there and lift the legs out of that mud. Matthew Ridge's positional play is beautiful to watch. If you are a fullback watching this man play, he's always there when the kicks are kicks are put through. They say he stands too shallow in the defensive line, but he more than makes up with, uh, up with, with uh, his positional play and sense of the game. This much better. No. Kosef. Kosef. Back towards the centre of the field. 12 metres inside the Reds' territory. Tuvi out of dummy half. Cunningham. Cunningham back to the centre of the field. 30 metres out from the Western Reds line. Last tackle against Manly Waringa. Across the line it comes. Cliff Lyons has it. Lyons throws the pass to Ridge. Ridge linking up out wide. Moore's gone without it. And the Western Reds, I thought, initially came up in possession. They've lost it. And so we're going to have a scrum. Would it be a well, turnover? It should be a turnover. I think that's what he's going to rule because Moore did knock it on initially. On the last tackle. And the scoreline here at the Wacker sees Manly Moringa leading by six points to two. Let's go, Manly. As the Reds bring it out through Chris Diva. I think the Reds can be quite happy with this first half. They're, they're against the, the breeze. Like I said before, an easily a 10 to 12 point breeze. They've held Manly. I, I, I think they'd be very happy with this. In the second half, good kicking game. They possibly could open it up a little bit more. Oh, Blair lost the ball behind him. And the referee is now indicating it was a knock on. But I think Julian did knock it on himself when he went to pick it up. Uh, well, I, I... So Manly Warringah leading the Western Reds six points to two. Manly making a couple of interchanges. I notice Hamono coming onto the field and also Scott Fulton and Gillespie coming back on. So a, a brand new front row as we welcome our viewers back to the Wacker. Six points to two, the scoreline in favour of Manly. Just before we went to the break, I don't think Blair knocked it on, but I think O'Neill might have knocked it on when he went to pick it up. Yeah, but, um, I, what I've seen is I'm sure Blair just dropped the ball backwards. 
Uh, and, and the referee was not in a good position to call it unless the touch judge did. There was definitely no knock on there. Lyons looking for a runner. It took forever for Moore to come in, but when he did, he did do well, and now he's lost the football, and the Reds have come up with it. Well, I wonder whether they're just trying to do too much at the moment, Manly, because um, it's an unfamiliar position for them to be only leading by four, but champion side, just patient side. Normally win games. I'm just wondering whether they think this breeze is so strong that they should be in front by a bigger margin. Yes, look at that, Danny Moore. Just lack of ball security in wet weather. You've got to hold that ball at least with two hands because it will pop out and he's slippery and muddy. David Boyd, 11 metres inside Manley's territory. They come the short side. Rodwell tries the little chip and chase. Ridge coming across. Ridge loses it and then oh, just manages to get it before Rodwell arrived. He was almost... Uh, but he was there. He almost got that, Matty Rodwell, after Ridge just lost it back at his first attempt to pick up this football that must now be like a piece of wet soap. No, Matty Rodwell's judging his kicks well. He's, uh, he's pushed Ridge back uh, deeper for the kicks. Now he's breaking them up with shorter ones. Gillespie, 30 metres out from the Manly line. Six points to two, the scoreline. Toovey. Trying to open something up on the edge of the cricket pitch. Last tackle against Manly. Ridge has it. Ridge looking for somewhere to find some space to kick. Straight down Julian O'Neill's throat. Julian will accept that gratefully as he runs back towards the 40 metre line where he will get up and play the football. Great positional player. Well, also the other fullback, Julian O'Neill. Fritz. Boyd loses the football forward as he was tackled. They haven't made too many errors, the Western Reds, but that's one. And now Ridge has it, and very quickly they're moving the ball out to the left side, but good defence stops Ridge in his tracks. Just inside the Western Reds territory. As Manley get it away to Gartner, and he will play it 10 metres inside the Reds territory. Sideline eye, Adrian Barrett. Yeah, Dave, as you said before, the changes to Manly, uh, Sidera, Sidaris went off and Cunningham and Turney, they're taking their hooker off, uh, which is unusual. And uh, Ridge, very shallow, and uh, Rodwell deciding to break up the kicks a bit and try to uh, put him in two minds, because he does stand very shallow. Adrian, I'm just wondering, you played on this ground a bit as far as kicking is concerned. Just how strong is that breeze, and uh, is four points enough? Four points is definitely not enough, Dave. This uh, breeze is very strong, and it'd be very interesting to see the tactics that the Reds employ in the second half, whether they go, do go for the long bombs and uh, put Ridge uh, really under pressure, particularly if he does stay shallow. Well, was that ball thrown out the back by Dale Fritz, or was it plucked out? It doesn't make much difference. The referee says play on it. Manly have it. Fulton finds the Gillespie. And if you're wondering, yes, Scott Fulton is the son of the coach, Bob Fulton. And he has been playing quite good rugby league also. So, you know, he deserves his chance in there. You know, I don't think Bob Fulton... I think he's had a lot of pressure just... on him, young Scott, just because he is Bob's son. No, I don't think he deserves that. No, the, boy, the boy's a good player. Ridge, it comes to Kosef, and Kosef will play it just outside the quarter line. Like That's five or six metres in from touch. David, if anybody knows rugby league, it's got to be uh, Bobby Fulton. He, he, he's done marvellous for Australia, Manly. If he's around rugby league... He's... Here goes Menzies! Menzies looking for his second back on the inside. Ridge, great defence from behind. But I reckon this will be a penalty. I reckon Ridge was tackled before he got the football. A referee, Mick Lewis, is agreeing. I reckon that Ridge... I reckon, fair dinkum, when you have a look at this, that Ridge is being tackled prior to receiving the football. Menzies goes for a gallop. Decides to go for the inside to Ridge. No. I thought he had him. Oh, gee, I reckon no. he held his shorts beforehand. Oh, he's making a dive there, David. So Ridge to have the shot at goal, which will put them away by a converted try. I just thought, well, I reckon Lewis saw the same as me, that perhaps Ridge was being tackled just prior to receiving the football. All right, here it is. Here, here, there it is. Here. No, Dave. Have a look at this, Davey yeah. boy. <laughs> well, I think you're right. I think he started. I think you might be right. He's actually he hasn't put a hand on him until he's received the ball, but he started to tackle him. There's the kick. It's two more points to Manly. They lead by eight points to two. I'd love to have another look at it again if we can. I reckon he started to make his tackle before he got the football, but he hasn't put a hand on him. So it's brilliant timing, really. Oh, it was great timing here. And there it goes inside. Uh, yes, he's caught the ball and then grabbed him. Fair tackle. Yeah, I think that I think what's thrown me and obviously thrown Mick Lewis too is that he's actually started the dive to affect the tackle. 
prior to him receiving the football. Oh, Dave, I don't care what you say, what anybody says. That is a poor decision by the referee. Very poor. Two points to Manly. Then we'll find out that he reckons someone else was taken out of the action. There. And it wasn't that that he was giving the penalty for. Still, it was worth the discussion. Ridge has it on the quarter line. Eight points to two, the scoreline in favour of Manly in the closing seconds of this first half. Wouldn't be too long before we hear the siren. And now, again, we've seen an intercept pass as Ryan brings it back now for the Western Reds. Now, can they put something on prior to the break? This should be about the last set of six before half time. As it comes across to O'Neill, O'Neill tries the little chip and chase. Danny Moore getting back for it, and Moore, in fact, the penalty, a Western Reds player taken out after the kick. Julian O'Neill, when he kicked the ball, he was tackled after he was kicked, after he kicked it. And there's the siren, so O'Neill will have a shot at goal, which will bring the teams back to just one try. Now, here it is. There's O'Neill. And, oh, yes, Tuvi's death set made a movement towards O'Neill after he's put the kick in, so that's interference. Well, he had his indicators on, didn't he? He said, yes, I'm going to run right into you here. He made no um, no effort to get out of the he way. Had, he had time to stop. He, exactly right. So O'Neill was the chance to narrow this break to just four points prior to half-time. The siren has already gone. Watch it swing here. And as we've already pointed out, the Western Reds will have the doctor at their back in the second half. And if the doctor gets up to any uh, greater strength, this man will be doing a lot of kicking in the second half, as will, Ma will uh, Matty Rodwell. The tactics in the, sec in the second half are going to be very important in this match. O'Neill, 18 metres out, the chance to make it eight points to four, and it's there, straight over the black dot. Two points to Julian O'Neill, two from two for the fullback, and at half time, Manly go in with a very slender four-point lead, with a strong breeze at their back in the second half. Are we going to see the Western Red pr provide us with a miracle? We'll be back shortly. Manly Warringah 8, the Western Reds 4. We'll be back. And welcome back to the Wacker Ground for the second half of this match. And with the half-time scoreline, reading Manly Warringah 8, the Western Reds 4. All of the Reds points being scored by Julian O'Neill with two goals from two attempts for Manly. Menzies, the try scorer and the two goals so far to Matthew Reed. I think Lewis just checking that everyone's ready. And Reed starts the second half. And now the Reds bring the ball out to the quarter line. Just outside the quarter line. The rain really driving in at the moment. Kearns out to the 30. Boyd, midway half and quarter line, Western Reds into the park. O'Neill, first kick from him in this second half, and we'll see a fair bit of this. He kicks it away, and look at that ball rolling end over end, and the wind picking it up and carrying it as well. Bridge has to go all the way down, and then a great tackle to finish it off from Scotty Wilson. Well, Scotty Wilson seen the ball. He was like a Carl Lewis, just took off, and that's great chasing. Whoa! And the referee indicating straight away that was a chest high tackle. Yeah. Here's Reed, bang, ball and all. Come here, says Scotty Wilson. That's a kick and chase for you. And now a mistake from the Manly side, and the Western Reds will go on the attack. Let's go down to the very much windswept and wet Adrian Barrich. Oh, you can say that again, mate. It's diabolical down here. It's absolutely terrible blowing a gale, and the breeze is coming in, but it's got to help the Reds. From the rooms, um, they do think they're a sniff of a, uh, a chance here. They're really in high spirits, a lot of yelling in the rooms. I really fear the Manly team, though, their retaliation. They are a class act. And after a tongue lashing by Bobby Fulton about complacency, I think the story of this game will be told in the first 20 minutes here. But you never know, boys. We could be uh, about to experience one of the big upsets of the year. You never know. Well, we just saw Big Barry John May that knocked the ball on after they'd won the scrum and got themselves into a good position. But the wind out there is really quite strong at the moment. We just saw some cups blown from virtually one end of the field to the other while that scrum was going down. Tierney having to have two bites of the cherry as he gets the ball back to the halfway. I think, David, in this kind of weather, um, Barry John May, the ball just popped, popped out of his hand. He was just setting himself for a, for a set play. And you really got to take the opposition on. Don't go 
Tiddly winking around. Take him on with the ball, otherwise you just just lose all, lose all possession. Tiddly winking around. Well, Tiddly winking. Hang on to the football. That's what it's called. <laughs> Put an effort Across the back line, and here's the man we're talking about, Barry John Mather, to get up and play it just outside the quarter line. The Western Reds back towards the halfway. It's time for a kick. They don't want to do anything else. They should kick right now. Boyd. And now, this will be the kick. O'Neill again getting the football, but not driving it all the way deep inside Manly's territory. Just kicking in front of uh, Popolati, who seems to be talking to the, ref the touch judge about the ball perhaps going out on the full, is he? But the touch judge immediately put the flag up and the scrum will go down 32 metres out from Manley's line. Well, the touch judges, they're experienced men, these fellows. I don't think we should argue with them. They've, they do their job quite well. I don't think he put his flag up and went out on the full. Well, he would have just waved it back. Yes. Tuvi. Lions. Great tackle. As Innes tried to come back on the inside of Barry John Mather. These two played together in the centres last year. And now a mistake. Another good tackle and a knock-on, says the referee. Pressure being applied by both sides early in the second half. A scrum to go down. Sideline eye, Adrian Barry. Yeah, the Reds are very, very pumped here. Anything could happen. And uh, Ted, the touch judge, said to say he was tiddly winking around as well. So here's Matty Rodwell to put the ball into the scrum. Yeah, going to be, um, that really didn't look like a, a knock on there by the man he played. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it looked like it was knocked back. For Scott Wilson with the football 31 metres out. Fritz, Rodwell, Tierney the defender. Fuller, Fuller on his own. Finds Boyd down to the quarter line. Manley's end of the park. Cheney was complaining that Matthew Rodwell dropped the ball a tackle before. Yeah, Fuller. Rodwell, the turn it comes to Higgins, who just goes straight and hard, and that's what Ted was saying. In these conditions, just take the opposition on. Fuller, open side. Rodwell, Rodwell, bringing a runner onto the burst was Kearns. Last tackle, Rodwell again. Rodwell tries the little kick in behind the opposition, but it bounces up beautifully, and Hopawadi does very well. He's still going, the big man. Good run after being put under a bit of pressure. They still haven't put him down. Finally, Robbie Gerns does it. Woo -woo. Does he look like a runaway steam train, doesn't he? Tierney almost lost that as he gets it out to the quarter line. In fact, he got away from it, out past the quarter line. Comes at Matty Fuller. I reckon those two would have played together. It's George Fuller and Tierney. Sadaris, a great run out of dummy half up to the halfway. Inspirational stuff from the hooker. Poor marking by the markers there for the Reds. Tuvi looking. Oh, what a hit! What a tackle on Menzies. That was a great tackle from Higgins forcing the error. Higgins hurt himself, I think, but I tell you what, Stephen Menzies uh, didn't know what hit him because he lost the football. And now the ball has been lost by the Western Reds. The first team that gets to control this football for a period of time will win this game, I reckon. I don't think it has to be Einstein to work that out. Oh, Darren Higgins' take on Menzies was a pearl. It was, a, it was timing, just at the right place at the right time. It was a classic tackle. Tierney, he's lost the football. And now the Western Reds have come up with it. They changed footballs at halftime. They weren't these sort of handling errors in the, uh, the first half. A uh, few, but nothing like what we've seen in the last... Uh, Two minutes or so. Well, they want to bring on new footballs in the second half. They're probably still using the ones in the uh, first half. Well, aren't these these special Steeden footballs that once they get a little bit of water off them, they're, oh, well, they're quite easy to handle? They're, they're weatherproof, but they're not slippery proof. Great tackle. Haven't seen some defence in their second half. Gartner and Tierney. And now O'Neill looking for the space between Hopawati and Ridge and finding it. And look at that ball run all the way to the touchline. What a kick. Well, that's knowing the ground and also using the conditions. And the scrum will go down 10 metres out and 10 metres in from touch. Well, if we've had two, 10 sets of sixes, it's all been down inside. The great field position. Here it is. This is all they've got. To, this is what they need. You don't make errors. You kick the ball. There's 70 metres they'll gain now. And all they've got to do now is work six tackles. I'll put the scrum on the 10-metre mark there. 
They don't want uh, Manly up the other end of the field because we know how dangerous they are 30 out. Tuvi. Tuvi, oh, he almost got in behind the defence and he had a lot of open space in front of him. I think he just caught him by the ear then. Tuvi appealing to the referee. He does, he does do a lot of complaining down Jeff Tuvi. He's the captain. Whether he yeah, no, that's fair enough. Gillespie. I don't know if these conditions are suit cement, you know, you'll get a bit, uh, bit of water on the cement, it's a bit hard for him. And now the penalty goes against David Boyd. And that's totally what you were talking about. Good set of six tackles, and they give themselves a chance. Instead, they give a penalty away. And they'll come up with another set of six to, uh, to attack him with. But a set of six that starts on the 50 and not 10 metres out. It's Gillespie. We'll play the football just inside the Western Reds territory. Another Kosef. Higgins across there, going low. Over the top was Fuller. Sedaris, open side, finds Cunningham. And Cunningham gets to within 33 metres of the Western Reds line. Sedaris again out of dummy half. And again, he's found a bit of a hole. Down to the quarter line. Tuvi. He's got Lyons outside him. They've got an overlap. Lyons gets it away. Menzies trying to continue the movement. Can't. He's only about 14 metres away, though. Lyons, Ridge. Ridge tries the little chip into the in goal area. Oh, they went without it initially. And now Julian O'Neill comes up with it. But, gee, I'll tell you what, a couple of Reds players had a look at that before O'Neill finally had to fly in and take it. Yeah, the ball was rolling very, very quick in goal. And there it is there. Julian O'Neill comes across. It's a good fullback. Great play. Picked it up. Got his team on the roll. Has got his team on the roll again. Sideline I Adrian Barrett. So O'Neill and Rodwell, they're the key to this game here with their kicks with this amazing breeze that's blowing. Um, Peter Mahollin isn't happy with the chase at the moment, but I, I tell you what, they look like they've got a bit of a sniff of an upset down here. The conditions are right in the Reds' favour. Also, Mahollin's not happy about uh, the, re the ref being talked into penalties. He thinks Manly talks better to the ref than, uh, than the Reds' boys. Uh, Ridge again, forcing to go a long way back towards his own goal line, and Danny Moore's knocked it on. That's the sort of mistake the Western Reds were trying to entice Manly into making, perhaps. That's what you get when you can play the football down one end of the football park by keeping the ball deep inside the opposition's territory. With the breeze at their back, they can perhaps do that. Peter Shields, 10 metres out. Scott Wilson, the dummy half. Rodwell. Kearns. And Robbie Kearns is 10 metres away. Rodwell again from dummy half. Now it comes to O'Neill. O'Neill tries the little chip over the top. Danny Moore's gone it and falling on it and scoring the try is O'Neill. No, the referee has ruled it's come off O'Neill. Well, yes. that'll be worth looking at. He says it's come off John uh, O'Neill and it's gone forward. Here it is here. He, he sums up the situation. The ball come up the line. He puts the little chip over. Two manly players will go for it. Yeah, touch and go, but a good decision, I think, by the referee on this occasion. Yep. O'Neill definitely came off him. As Tuvi gallops out of dummy half back towards the halfway. I'm not even sure whether he ever put down with pressure on the ball anyway, did he? No, I think he might have knocked it on twice, there, even though he, when he went to dive on the football. Manly. But how quickly the game changes with a kick. Manly were 10 metres out, one kick from Matthew Fuller. And all of a sudden, the game is down at the other end of the park. Lions. Kicking a crossfield. Paul Evans drops the ball and the referee's going to have the Manly players for being offside. Now the touch judge has ruled that on this side of the field. The touch yeah. judge, one of them, I think it might have been Terry uh, Craig Innes that he's ruled. Let's have a look at it here and see if we can catch anybody who's offside. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Cunningham. There he is there. He'll go through. He was offside. A poor catch by Paul Evans anyway. It was a very, very poor catch. But again, when the, often it's harder when the ball's being kicked into the breeze because the, uh, the wind holds it up. Here's Kearns back towards the halfway line. No change for that half-time score. 8-4 the scoreline in favour of Manly over the Western Reds. 
David Boyd right in the middle of the cricket pitch to play the ball. Gee, does that remind you of the old days of the SCG, Teddy? I was at the mud. <laughs> Julian O'Neill, a couple of metres, manly side of halfway. You needed plenty of uh, McCure Graham after the matches at the cricket ground, believe me, that ball I soiled. Breathe. Jumped into the ground. Heavy defence from Manly. Rodwell. Rodwell will kick. It's going high this time. Hamono and Chris Ryan. Hamono's gone without it. And in the end, the ball will go across the touchline, and I think it will be a Western Reds feed into the scrum. And the referee says yes. Oh, it's definitely got to be. Um, that is a good tactical play, I that. I, I think I said Hamono. I should say Hopawadi. Hopawadi, yeah. There's Chris Ryan. It comes off uh, Hopawadi's shoulder, but kicking the ball into that corner, the sun is out and he's blaring right into his eyes. It is a very hard corner to catch a football. And with the breeze as well, it's uh, not easy. Now six tackles, 15 metres out. That's great field position for the Reds. And so they can convert it. Remember, before today's game, Manly had only conceded 102 points and very few tries. As Scott Wilson threw the dummy and it wasn't taken. Rodwell. Kearns goes straight down the centre. In a dummy half is Matty Fuller. Open side they come again. Rodwell, Rodwell away it goes. Barry John Mather. Only four or five metres out. 8-4 the scoreline in favour of Manley. Full of the dummy half. Yeah, Rodwell, Rodwell on his own. Can't get through. Fuller then is in a dummy half. I'm wondering which way he'll go. Fuller decides the little chip in behind the Manley defence. Doesn't come off. In fact, it was beautifully taken by Jim Sedaris. He didn't even get behind the marker. Yeah, I think a better option might have been out to his back line to the left-hand side. He had all his plays out the left-hand side. It was at least a, um, a five-on-eight situation, but um, it was a poor, uh, probably a poor judge kick by poor Matthew. Out towards the quarter line. And they've gone without it here. Gillespie and Ziz has knocked the ball on. Now O'Neill, O'Neill, O'Neill is only 15 metres away. Had he been able to keep that going, I think they had a little overlap initially when he picked that ball up. Boyd. Boyd's only 10 metres away. Good defence around the bootlaces. Menzies, Grieve. They keep it going the same way. Rodwell, back to Barry John Mather. Great defence. Hopawadi, is it? Oh, no, that's the mono. Grieve. Lift it. He just had to be hammered into the deck for the second time in about five minutes. Sadaris, the defender. Fuller. Away it comes to Rodwell. And turn it comes out to big to Peter Shields. And Shields is tackled. Only about eight metres away. Last tackle against the Reds. Which option will they use this time? Kearns. O'Neill. O'Neill decides to go to the air. Hopawati getting underneath it. Ridge gets underneath it and knocks the ball backwards over the dead ball line. And play, I reckon, will restart with a line dropout. Score line here at the Wacker. Manly eight, the Western Reds four. So back at the Wacker, Manly 8, the Western Reds 4, Matthew Ridge to restart play with that line dropout after losing control of the football momentarily and forcing it over the dead ball line as Johnny Greve brings it back. We'll go to the sideline as the sun is out again. And here's Adrian. The sun is out and it's beautiful down here. It's a real testing time though. The boys, uh, both sides getting very tired. The Reds really missing the finishing of uh, Mark Geyer and Rodney Howe. Um, Solomon Homono's gone on, Cunningham's uh, come off, and John Greaves gone on for the Reds, and uh, Higgins carrying that leg after that hit on Menzies has come off. Well, he had a little look then, the pass from Kearns, not a good pass. He and Peter Shields a little bit undecided whether the pass should be thrown or not, and in the end, a bad pass and not very well handled either. And so the scrum will go down with a manly feed. Now Dave, what I do like about Manly, Lyons varies his plays in it, then there's another one, Tooby, he can vary his play also, but I'm a little bit critical of um, maybe, maybe the Reds um, in their half. He, he, here's the drop ball, a simple catch by Peter Shields, just puts it down. There, if you're going to win the game, you've got to control the ball. Scott Wilson, I'd like to see him get himself more involved. Everything seems to be evolved around Matthew Rodwell. Surely Scott Wilson has got something to offer out there. So here's Manly with the football, Tooby. 
offloading the pass and on the quarter line Manley will restart football with the play of the ball Tuvi finds Hamono he does look like Hopper Lady he the same haircut Tuvi Ridge comes back on the inside he seeks if he lines out wide scheming and planning what to do next there he is and Lyons, Lyons brings it on to Menzies and he comes back on the inside and good defence. Paul Evans read that well. Last tackle as Lyons gets the football and decides to thread it along the touchline. Beautifully positioning himself as O'Neill and O'Neill will play it 30 metres out from his own line. One thing I've got to be critical of about him is when the bombs do go up in goal, um, if a catcher is going for it, the other players look for targets to run at. I think this has got to be looked at. Just outside the 30, Ryan plays it, Fuller, looking for a runner, here's Cameron Blair, Blair runs at Cliffy Lyons, a little bit of a cumble and throw virtually in there, but effective enough. Oh, at 35 years old, he, he's a great player in the young Cliffy Lyons, he's been great for the sport of rugby league. Wrong. Fuller, Matthew Fuller again, putting that ball in behind the Manly defence, getting back as Moore, so too as Ridge and chasing through quickly was the original kicker also coming through quickly and affecting the tackle and down there Chris Diva finishes off the good work from Manny Fuller well they haven't been outside the right 20 uh, Manly they just seem to be coming out so far in the oh it has half. it has they haven't had much of the possession and they've had to do a lot of the work down this end of the football field and in heavy conditions, that starts to take its toll on the leagues. Well, in heavy conditions, you're at the wrong end of the football field, aren't you? Um, a dry day, Manly be looking to spin the ball out wide. But under today's conditions, they'll keep it tight. They won't go too far wide inside their own uh, 20. Tuvi, Tuvi getting under one. Has crunched into the ground 33 metres out. Last tackle against Manly. Sloppy play of the ball, although perhaps he, he wasn't allowed to play it as well as... He should have been allowed. His ridges kick is deep inside the Western Ridge territory. It won't find touch. O'Neill is there, and look at the maroon and white jumpers around him. There's about five of them. Just outside his quarter line. As Ryan goes for a run out towards the 30. Paul Evans, 31 metres out. Matthew Rodwell was just uh, getting his troops together then. Here's Scott Wilson. And back on the inside is an opportunity here as it comes away to Wilson again. He puts it over the top, racing away to his big Barry John Mather. And Barry John Mather levels the scores. Teddy Goodman said, can Scotty Wilson do something? Teddy Roddy puts on a try. And the big Englishman scores the try. And the scores are level. Manly 8, the Reds 8, with the kicker goal to come. Well, it had to come. Attack, attack, good field position, ball control. Here he is, Scotty Wilson. He's come onto the ball. He's put the inside pass. In. Jeff Doyle just come on as a replacement. There's Scotty Wilson over the head pass. And Hopawani falls over. He is a happy Barry John Mather. That'll do his confidence a world of good. <laughs> Not happy, but half. Well, here it is again. Good work from Doyle too. Here's the little ball back on the inside. Doyle found the gap beautifully. And then Wilson backing up superbly, drew Hopawati in, popped the pass at the right time, and the big Englishman has done the rest. Four points, big smile on the face, and the scores are level. Well, these are his conditions, aren't they? And Nick, it's uh, Scotty Wilson, you know, like he's looking for a home. You know, even if he just produces that one little piece of magic every game, he can stay here in Perth. Well, listen to this crowd. There's Julian O'Neill has the opportunity to put the Reds in front. Also, David, over, over the past period of weeks, uh, well, even the last month, when the Reds hit the lead, or especially when they score a try, most teams come back within six, six tackles and score against them. They can't let this happen. So Julian O'Neill with his all-important kick in conditions like this, scoring is always low. So poking your nose in front can often be enough, when you, especially when you have the breeze at their back, which is what they've got in their second half. Of course, in reserve grade, they saw the uh, 
performance where they scored most of the points against the uh, the breeze. And it was a, and it was a field goal that really uh, put pressure on Manly to come back and score a couple of tries. O'Neill no, after the ball had fallen off the uh, the appliance to start with. The appliance. I don't know what else do you call it? Electrical appliance. It's meant to be a mound, but it's hardly a mound. It's a plastic mould. <laughs> Here's O'Neill with a chance to put the Reds in front. It's coming around. It's coming around. It's there. O'Neill converts the try, and the Western Reds hit the lead midway through the second half. The Reds ten, Manly Warringah eight. Matthew Ridge gets the game underway again. 18 minutes to go. Beautiful take. Chris Diva really had to go high to collect that. He was under, he was under pressure also. There were, the Manly boards were coming through. It was a good little short kickoff. Hold up into the wind and it did come back. Great catch, Diva. Now Blair. 32 metres out from the Western Reds line. The Reds in front by two points as Kearns gets it out to the 40. Good solid tackle too. Open side they come, and here goes the kick, again driving play deep inside Manly's territory, but Ridge getting there to take it on the full, as that had bounced it would have found touch about five metres out. It really does roll into the corners here at the Wacker. Well, that wasn't a bad kick because you're kicking away from Matthew Ridge, and with him running towards the sideline, he catches the ball on the full, he has to turn and come back in field, a good tactic. Let's go down to the sideline, Adrian Barrage. Yeah, Dave, it's looking very good for the Reds down here. The crowd's really getting behind them, and uh, the Manly boys' heads were down after that try, and, and that was a good set of six and a good kick and chase, so we could have an upset on our hands, I think. And the big thing is they've had to do so much running in the second half, they're probably feeling a bit tired. As Cunningham lays it forward and gets to within 32 metres of the line. Open side it comes. Lions has it. Lions keeps it going out wide. Innes, last tackle, remember. Innes tries the little chip back in field and going high again. O'Neill takes it superbly. A lot of pressure on him. Lions was there. The Lions then pushed him over afterwards. That could have easily been a penalty. Now, I think the referee just turned his head away at that, at that moment of push. And Manny look a little bit upset now. Their, their tackles are starting to sting. They know they're in for a game here. Here go the Reds again through Big Peter Shield, 31 metres out. And the kick again, kicking away from Ridge and away from Moore. And look at it bounce. And Moore, when he collects the ball, has finished up 10 metres out from his own line. Kearns chases great tackle. Kearns, at the moment, he's hit the ball up, he's chased, he's tackled. Got to be on the high list of men of the match today, Robbie Kearns. Ridge to play it. 30 metres out from his own line. Tuvi ducks out a dummy half, pinches an easy 10, make it 20 up to the halfway line. Good stuff from the skipper. The Reds are falling off their marker play, that's twice I've got. They've tapped the ball forward, Manly, and Tuvi's got out a dummy half twice. Open side they come, Lions. And Menzies have gone without it, and the referee has ruled that a knock on. That was a good decision by the referee. Definitely went forward. But uh, well, I just can't see, David, why why are Manly throwing the ball from side to side? There it is. Uh, watch Lions' just pass here. It'll come off Menzies, he'll, and it will go forward. Have a look at this. There it is. The ball is propelled forward. Although it went behind his back or his body was in front of the ball, the ball is propelled forward. But Manly are not playing wet weather football. They are playing dry weather football. You can't spin it across the field, though. Yeah, but there was a time for years when everyone suggested Manly couldn't play in the wet. It wasn't. <laughs> it was, I think, more of a myth than anything else, but they... They well, did lose some well, I don't think they could. They, they, they well, found sides, it very tough. I think sides lift themselves too when they play manly. And I suppose in wet conditions where you can't play the free-flowing game. Well, that's their game. It evens teams up a lot. And Robbie Kearns did well at the second take. At around about uh, first slip while playing on the far pitch. Cameron Blair, a crossfield. Good solid hit. Brown thought it was a bit high. Referee said, no, nah, it's only chest high. He had a good look at it. Open side, Rod Wolf. O'Neill thought about the kick. In turn, it comes out towards the right side of the field and the kick finds Ridge a few metres out from his own line. Many Reds down there giving chase and Ridge is going to pack, play it 
only 11 metres out from his own line. The Seagulls are coming in, looking for the worms, I think, in the ground. It's so wet in that centre. There's plenty of them there. I suppose you could always call them manly supporters. Now, the they're Seagulls, aren't they, Sea Eagles? <laughs> they, are, they are the beachside suburb of Sydney, or one of them. <laughs> Up goes the champ from the crowd here. Reds, Reds, Reds. They're right behind their team here today. Hamono, almost out to the 40. 10 points to 8 the score in favour of the Reds. Almost to the halfway line. Last tackle against Manly as the rain and wind drives in again. The sideline commentary team dashed for the shelter of the umbrellas and anything else they can find. And uh, I don't blame them because it's coming driving in the big three mantle doctor. There's the manly bench. Biffy Lyon shaking his head. Not sure what about. I think he thought it might have come off a Western Red foot or something before it went into touch. No, no, de definitely just rolled into touch. <laughs> and let's go down to the waterlogged sideline, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, Dave, you're not joking, mate. Everything's coming here. Not only the Fremantle doctor, but uh, the wind and the rain and the sleet and it squalls. But uh, it's all in the Reds' favour. So the Western Reds with this wind at their back. About 12 minutes remaining in the match. They lead by 10 points to 8. As Fuller runs back towards the centre in the cricket pitch area. Fuller and yanking it out now, Scotty Wilson. Back towards the halfway line, Fuller. Boyd. Good tackle from Tooby. Forcing a little bit of pressure, hoping that the ball might be jolted loose as Johnny Greve just runs the ball across the halfway. Last tackle. The kick will come in. Surely someone will get the kick in. And he had a little bit of pressure on him and beautifully executed O'Neill. Gets his kick in. It'll come back for a start from the centre of the quarter line. But it's a good kick anyway because he's made uh, Manly have to backpedal and they'll start from the centre of the quarter line. Here at the Wagger, the Reds lead by two, ten points to eight. Back at the Wagger, it's Manly with the football, 11 minutes remaining in the game. The Reds are leading by two. Cunningham, 40 metres out from his own line. Sidaris goes on his own, manages to offload. Haven't seen enough of that in the second half, but it's a very difficult condition to try and play that sort of football as Menzies is set upon and tackled. Manly through Hill and Hopawadi had run past him, so he couldn't throw the pass. Hopawadi on the last tackle. Ridge, Ridge trying to thread something and create something out of nothing. The ball is loose and finally it's dived on by a manly player and the referee says it's six to go. It was six to go because I tell you what, very slack defence there by the Reds. But the ball was going nowhere. Lions didn't know what to do with it. And when the ball was on the foot and only it dribbled a couple of inches, the Reds wouldn't even fall on the ball. Hamono. 30 metres out as he's almost forced across the touch line. Innes. Innes' tackle, 35 out from the Western Reds line. The Reds lead with about 10 minutes remaining in the match. It's 10 points to 8. Gartner tries to do something. 30 out. The ball is played again. Lions. Lions across field. Kitts brings it back on the inside. Kosef tries to do something. It comes to Menzies. But Menzies has tackled in tackle number 5. On the quarter line. Manly, probably their most or best attacking platform in the second half. It comes to Hill. Hill tries the little grubber kick in, and getting back there, Chris Ryan saves the day for the Western Reds. And they have possession, but down their own end of the field as they bring the ball out to the quarter line. Good run from Julian O'Neill, showing a clear head under pressure. As the Western Reds have lost the football, again they dropped it, and Sadaris finds Menzies. Menzies now offloads. They've got support. Danny Moore! He throws a pass, it's oh. gone loose, and the Western Reds come up with the football. Well, well, well. Is that going to be Manly's lost opportunity? So I'm just looking at these players. When the players are about to throw the ball in support, they're looking at this big white patch. They don't know who's on whose side here. Well, we said that, Jerry. Now they've lost the football themselves, the Western Reds. There it is, Danny Moore. See, the ball was thrown back, and then again, come off Evans's head. That could have been play on. 
Now Manly again with an attacking position. Kosef trying to get in behind the defence. Ten points to eight the scoreline in favour of the Western Reds as Sedaris goes on his own. He was looking for a penalty there with the Reds player being offside, Jim Sedaris. The marker who tackled him wasn't there, I think that's what the referee ruled. As Lyons comes across field and they've lost the football here. Well, they did lose it initially, and I think in the end it came from the Western Reds player. I don't think Innes ever really lost it totally. He no, certainly he lost it for momentarily. But he caught it again. And out wide, the ball has drifted loose. And picking it up now, here's a chance. Racing away with it at the moment is Diva. Diva down to the 40. In fact, it's Chris Ryan, and now he's lost it. He lost the ball for it. Great tackle by Terry Hill. He's come from nowhere, Terry Hill. And here he goes, Chris Ryan. Have a look at this for a tackle. That was a try saver, and the ball's been spilt out. Knock on there. We'll have a scrum at the other end of the field, and it'll be Manly loose end feed. There they are, the under 15s. All these children. That's New South Wales, WA, South Australia, Victoria. They're here for the under 15s championship this weekend. There they are. They're all waving at themselves. We can see that's Queensland standing up there waving. Manly, down their own end of the field. There's not long left in the game. They've had a few opportunities down the other end. Now they've lost the football. This will be a penalty. Now, Barry John Mazer, I think, is the offender. Here it is now. Well, it is the tackle there. Um, what's going to happen here? There's a hand in there. Well, yeah, number Dale Fritz. Dale Fritz. Dale Fritz. Silly things. You don't need those sort of... Um, yeah, uh, well, controversies in uh, this late in the game. I think that Barry John thought it was him who was pinged initially, and he's supposed to say, what, me? He was right. It wasn't him. Penalty decision correct, though. Manly inside the Western Reds territory again. Hamono down to the 30. Ten points to eight the scoreline. About six minutes left in the game. As Sadara sends it open, it comes now to Tuvi. Lions, Lions looking for a runner. That was a forward pass, and the referee oh, yes. said so. Definitely forward. He was perfectly in line with that. <laughs> Dead set forward. The crowd cheers. What's it like on the sideline, Adrian? Oh, it's fantastic, Danny. The Reds crowd getting right into it, and uh, this bench, the Reds bench, they think they're a big chance. But the, the ball is like a cake of soap, so it's whoever can retain possession will win this game. Yes, as you've seen there, Lions. Oh, he's not too happy about it either. It was a marginal decision. Oh, it was dead but, set well, forward. But I, well, yeah, well, it was forward. I mean, it's right in line with us. I mean, it's not as if... But he was knocked back a bit, Cliff Lines. You know, when you get hit, you do get knocked back, and that, oh, it's only, it's only marginal. You're saying it created uh, some sort of optical illusion. Well, we, ha we have had eye troubles in this game today. Well, the bottom line is the Reds have got the football as they bring it back towards the halfway line. Five minutes were remaining in the game, or thereabouts, as it comes to Sedaris, and again, using the tactic that has been employed pretty well throughout the second half. It's going to stop in the in-goal area, or will it? Now, this is pressure time. Lyons is tackled over the net goal line, and play will restart with a dropout from under the goalpost. The Reds can lead Manly 8, five minutes to go. And back here at the Wacker, a frenetic five minutes coming up. The Reds leading by two. Play to restart. Here's Lyons back there. Bang, Chris Ryan again. Tackles him over the dead ball line. Manly having taken that very quick drop out and now a sloppy pass. And they have to go almost back to the goal line to collect the football. Oh, wide it comes again. Innes. Innes is tackled or is going to be tackled. 14 or 15 metres out from the Manly line. Less than five minutes to go. Two points the margin in favour of the Western Reds. It's top playing bottom, and at the moment the bottom team are on top. Menzies is tackled less than 20 metres out from his own line. As it has played to Ridge. Ridge offloads Tierney. Tierney's lost the football backwards, says the referee. Now Ridge has lost it. Another player loses it backwards, and in the end, Tuvi gets it. And Tuvi is tackled just outside his quarter line. Tackle number four. Open side it comes. Tierney. Tierney runs straight through the big ball and is tackled 40 out. Last tackle against Manly. What option are they going to use this time? It comes to Lyons. Lyons runs at the defence, throws the pass, it comes to Winners, it comes to Moore. Moore decides to centre kick. The ball is gone. 
off the hands of Menzies, straight into the hands of another Western Reds player, and now the Manly players, in fact, Cliff Lyons has ruled to be offside in effecting that tackle, and the Western Reds get a very welcome penalty. Well, I thought they were all offside from that kick. I didn't think Menzies was onside at all. It was Cook and also Cunningham when the kick went back inside the mall. There it is. That's a play on that one. There was nothing wrong with that one there at all. But he was late getting up and playing the ball. David, we've got a lot of Manly supporters over here in the West, and there's a lot of them here, here today. So three and a half minutes to go as the ball will come down towards the 30-metre mark and the Western Reds have six tackles to run at Manly. The Reds lead by 10 points to eight. As Perns charges ahead, 23 and a half on footy tap. Field goal. Could we see a field goal? Well, I suppose when it soaks up time and they get possession back, if, it, if it's... Well, if they the get a field goal, they've got six tackles, that'll be the ball game. Out wide it comes now. Peter Shields has it. Well, they're on the right side of the field to have a shot. Barry John Mather. Now, here he is. The shot at field goal. It looks good. I think it's there. The referee says yes. Western Reds another point. The Reds 11. Lead Manly 8. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. And what's it like on the sideline now, Adrian? They're just going mad here. Teddy, you've called it the field goal. Julian O'Neill heard you and he just potted it through. The call is also midget sets, which means the, the backs will be hitting the ball up. And after that, just kicking. Kicking and midget sets. Ah, uh, mate, you know, been there, knew what they were doing. So again, they try this short dropout. Menzies goes high, and Manly will get the football from it. Although, did he knock that ball on? There's still a chance here, Manly. They didn't cover it up properly, the Western Reds. Now it comes across the line, and Manly have it 30 out. This is Manly's last set of six, you would think, unless something happens, and just about everything's happened in this game today. As Tierney runs it at the defence, he's out towards the quarter line. Well, I think it's got to be a high bomb from Manly. I don't think they can break this line. I think it's got to be a, a, a take your chances with the bomb. Open side, Lyon sends it out to Menzies. Menzies on his own. Beautifully taken and loses the football. It goes across the touchline. The referee's ruled a knock on anyway. The scrum will go down. The Western Reds will get the feed. Ridge and Fuller have an argument. I think Ridge might have said something to the ref as well. But that might be just frustration in the end. Ridge is saying that the ball was punched out by Jeff Doyle, I think. Well, David, a minute, to, minute and a half to go. The Reds have really got to still take them on. They really can't just uh, go lackadaisy. They've just got to hit the ball hard. I've seen teams really just go nilly-willy. They just don't want to do anything. They just slow up. <laughs> We've had everything today. Ten at his brilliant best. Paul Evans out towards the quarter line. Look for some jolting Gee, that tackles. That looked a bit oh, high, that one, too. Uh, they're jolters. They'll be jolters in this last minute. As Fritz has it. He's hammered into the line, into the ground. And he'll take his time to get up. They'll just have an easy six here, the Western Reds. They'll soak up many a time and then reef it down the other end of the field. Turns, hit a bit high by Ridge, but he'll get up and play it. 23, 24 metres out. Time is up. We're into injury time, basically. We're into time on. 40 seconds, I'm told, there is to go. That's tackle number four. It cut now. Fuller plays the football. It comes away to O'Neill. Tuvi got out of the box quickly. The kick downfield. Hamon, I uh, should say, Hopawadi gets it. He brings it back towards the halfway. Hopawadi! Hopawadi in the dying seconds of the game. What a run from Hopawadi. 35 metres out. As it comes the open side, Tuvi finds Lyons. Lyons in turn finds Menzies. Menzies gets it away to Innes. Innes looking for the sideline. The ball is almost away with victory. 11 points to wait the scoreline. Julian O'Neill, the perfect game I reckon from him. A great captain's game, a great performance, and isn't this crowd entitled to be happy? Well, it's a great shot in the arm for Western Australian Rugby League, especially over here in Perth. The bottom side, they've done it against all the odds. Like you said, uh, David, 23 and a half start. But under these conditions, um, it was ready made for the Reds. The second half tactics by Peter Mulholland. He's got to take a bow, Mulholland. His tactics and kick. Field position was tremendous. But all in all, great effort there by the Reds here today.
Well, a great performance. Barry John Mather scored the try that put them in front or drew them level. And the great goal kicking from the fullback, Julian O'Neill, and his kicking in the second half, which just continually drove Manly back, I reckon was an outstanding feature of this game. And in the end, turned the tide. They're going to thank their fans, and why not? They've copped a lot of rubbish today. They can stand 20 feet tall. They deserve it. The Reds 11, Manly 8. Well done, Julian O'Neill.